Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be taking a request from my website. So if we go over there we can see the post. And this post asks, could you publish a tutorial for a slideshow that has both automatic image and thumbnails at the bottom? So I said that I could do that. And basically what this tutorial is going to be is a combination of my simple image gallery and my automatic one. So to just kind of give you an idea of what that's going to look like, I have some other pages from my site. I have my simple image gallery here. You can see that I have the code and everything in the video. At the bottom you can see how this looks. Uh, if you click through the thumbnails you can see that it will bring up the bigger image of that thumbnail. And we're going to be combining that with the automatic image gallery and I'll just go over here and again the code and everything. And then basically the gallery will just go for two seconds on an image and then it will go to the next image and so on for a continuous loop and it will just repeat over and over. So basically what we're going to be creating is a gallery that runs on its own but also has thumbnails and if you click that it'll stop on that image and then when you take your mouse off of the thumbnail then it will start up and it'll continue continuously on. So um, one thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm going to have all of the action script and the project files and everything um, for this tutorial that you're watching right now in the flash section under image galleries. And um, also, I'm going to be using some of the code from the uh, tutorials that I mentioned, the simple image gallery and the automatic image gallery. Um, it's important once you start having a lot of files um, to be able to look back to your previous files and be able to copy and paste things. Like, there's no reason that if we have a timer function that we should have to make one again because we have one right here. We can just copy and paste, and we know that it works correctly and everything. So I'm going to still explain what all this does, but I just wanted to let you know um, that if you are making flash files to make sure and save them because you have valuable code there that will save you time if you can just copy and paste that later. Alright, so enough of the preliminary stuff. We're going to actually start with flash now, so I'm going to open that up. And we're going to create an ActionScript 3 document. And this is important because you want to make sure you are creating an ActionScript 3 document because uh, this tutorial is for ActionScript 3 and ActionScript 2 will not work unless you change the code. So we're going to create ActionScript 3. Then I'm going to change the stage size to 600 pixels by 500 pixels. Okay. Click OK. And now what we're going to do is bring up our timeline and I'm going to create two more layers. So I'm going to click this little button down here to create a new layer. Then we're going to call the bottom one big images. We're going to create the second one and um, basically call that thumbnails. And third one we're going to call AS for action script. So the next thing we need to do is create three more blank keyframes on our big images layer. So I'm going to right click on just an open frame that doesn't have anything on it. Right click, put insert uh, blank keyframe and do that again and again until we have four keyframes. So then basically we need to put each of our images on this so we need to bring in our images. So I'm going to go over to library over here and we're just going to go to file, import, import to library and I have my images here. Let's click on the first one, hold shift and click on the last one in order to select them all and open those up and I'm just going to size this down so we can see our stage a little more clearly. And what I'm going to do is basically go to the first one and make sure that the little red thing that you move here is called a playhead is on the first frame. Drag out your first image and then we're going to move the playhead to the second frame. Bring out your second image and so on. Third frame, third image, fourth frame, fourth image. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is basically position these. So I'm going to click on this image, go to properties, and I already have this figured out. Um, you'll want to make sure that these are the exact same for each of yours, but I already have this uh, written down. And then we're going to make the width 558. So I have 18 or 20 for the X, 18 for the Y, and 558 for the width and 372 for the height. It's basically the same thing for each of these. Um, so I'm just going to go 20, 18, 58 and it'll automatically change the last one because all of the images are the same size. So 2018, 558. And basically what this is doing is it's making them the exact same size and position on each layer. So I still have to do the last one, um, but it'll just help to make it a more, co a more coherent process for viewing the gallery. So we're going to say 2018, 558. All right, so you can see they're all in the same spot now. So that's going to make it look pretty nice. 
So the next thing we need to do is go up to the next layer, which is thumbnails. And on the first layer, we're going to make the thumbnails. So we're going to go back to the library and we're going to drag out our first image. We're going to, we're just gonna drag it out here and then put this one here, here and here. And we're just going to basically um, change the size of each of these. So we're gonna go properties, okay? And the width is going to be 129 and it'll automatically change the height. And again, 129. And 129. Now just make sure that you have these in the correct order. You wanna make sure um, that the order that you have the frames in um, is the same for each of these. So I'll have columns, markers, strawberries, and then trees for mine. But um, it just helps, it makes it look nicer if you have them in the right order um, as your images play. So basically, uh, what I'm gonna do with these is I'm going to select them all, um, go to Window, Align, and then I'm going to click this button here which aligns the top edge and you can see that it moves them all into um, the same height, basically they're all level at the top. And then I'm going to take, and since I have these buttered up against the edges here of my big image, um, we're going to click this right here which distributes a horizontal edge and it's basically gonna make the gap in between each of these images um, each of these little thumbnails the same width. You can see this one's different size than this one and this one's definitely different size than this one. And if we click that, boom, they're all the same size. So that's a nice little tip for you. So what we're gonna do now is basically convert each of these into a button. So we're gonna click on the first one, hit F8, and we're going to call it BTN1, and click on the second one, hit F8. And again, um, make sure that you have the type set at a button instead of a movie clip or um, whatever else you have. So we're going to take and put BTN2 for this one, BTN3, and F8, BTN4. All right, so this next step is um, very important. If you're having issues, you might want to come back and check this step. Um, you want to make sure that you um, go back to the beginning and you're going to click on the first image and you're going to go over to wherever your properties are and it'll have an area for an instance name. What we're going to do is type in BTN1 here. Um, and we're going to type in BTN2 for the next one, and so on, BTN3, and BTN4. All right, so now I think that we're ready to um, actually add some action script. Um, so we're going to first, um, we have our action script right here. What we're gonna do is basically take all of the frames that we already have, and I'm just gonna hold shift and select them all. We're gonna move them all out one frame. All right, now it's uh, gonna seem a little tricky right now, um, but I'll explain why we're gonna do this later. So you're gonna have one blank keyframe in front of everything. So you're now at a total of five frames across um, for each of your layers. So for the first frame, what we're gonna do is add some action script in, and we're gonna go to the actions frame. If you don't have that, you can go up to window, and we're going to go to the actions frame, and I'm gonna go back to my website, and on the automatic image gallery, I'm going to take and copy all of the code except the stop action at the top. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it in. So let me explain for a second what we have here. Um, real quick, I'm just going to label this so that we can remember what we have here. So I'm just gonna hold the slash key, which is the question mark, and I'm just gonna type in um, interpol. All right, so that'll make our interval gallery um, right there. So what we have um, is this, what I just added in was a bunch of slashes, which basically is just like a comment system. This won't actually do anything, but it'll help us remember what this is for. So um, what we have here is basically uh, the code that is going to run the timer. So I guess I can call this timer. And what we did is we created a variable, and if you want a more in-depth explanation of this code, you can go check out that tutorial for the automatic image gallery. Um, basically, we created a variable called next image, and then we basically made that a timer variable, and then we created a new timer that's going to change something every 2000, which is equivalent to two seconds. So for every second that you want your image gallery to stay on an image, you will add a thousand. So then we added an event listener to this variable. So we said that um, the next image, which is, we call it next image because it's going to be playing the next image. So next image dot add event listener, and then in the parentheses, it's a timer event, and then dot timer, and then we have a function called play next. So it's going to play the next frame um, 
in the timer. So then we're gonna start the timer, which is going to cause it to play the function, which is going to go to the next frame. So we have function play next event, and it's an event, and then it's going to go to the next frame. So basically just um, whenever it gets to two seconds, it's going to play the next frame. So that's how that code works right there for the automatic uh, image gallery. And we're going to be using some of this code in order to um, integrate it into the simple image gallery. So in order for the automatic image gallery part of this to work, we need to also be able to stop it at the very end and send it back to the beginning. So once it gets to this last frame here, once it gets to our tree picture, it's going to need to go back to the beginning and basically restart the timer. So I have code for that as well, and that is right here. So we're gonna copy this last frame code, go to flash, and what we're gonna do is put it at the very end um, off of the last frame. So we're going to basically go to after our tree picture, one frame, right click, insert blank keyframe, click on the actions, paste, and what we have here is it's basically stopping the timer. So it's taking and it's ending the timer from working. Then it's going to reset the timer. And this is probably the most important thing. Um, we're gonna be using both the stop and the reset in the further in the tutorial. Basically, you're stopping the timer from working, then you're resetting it. And the reason that you're gonna reset it is because if you were to just go back to the very beginning without resetting the timer, it's basically trying to run two timers at one time because you haven't really reset the first one and it ends up screwing up your timing and it starts going at like a really quick speed and it'll just progressively get faster over time until your timer is completely messed up. So you wanna make sure you're using the reset in order to do that. And then we're basically go to going to the first frame. And what we're gonna do is change this to play. And if you actually were to run this gallery right now, it would actually freak out um, because it's playing, but we need it to play because it's going to move to the second frame. Um, it's part of why I said that it was a little bit tricky, um, but I'm still gonna get to explaining that in a little bit. So we're gonna move that to play instead of stop. So I'm gonna go to the timeline, and now we're actually ready to add in the action script for our buttons, so our thumbnails are actually gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is take and go to the second frame of our AS layer, which is basically running the entire rest of the gallery besides the first frame. And so I'm gonna make sure and select that, go to actions. And I'm gonna go back to my website, go over to the simple image gallery. And this code um, is pretty much, we can copy this right from here. We're copying the action script three code. Control C, go over to flash, and we're gonna paste that in. All right, so let me try and explain some of this right here so you know what is going on in this code. So we have BTN1, which if you remember right, is um, our thumbnails. And we created those thumbnails and put an instance name of BTN1. So we're gonna be targeting that. So we're gonna say if button one, we're gonna add an event listener. So it's basically an event listener is something that's waiting for it to happen. So it's like just sitting there. It's like, if this happens, I'm gonna do something. So it's like, if what I have in these parentheses happens, then I'm gonna do something. So. Button one is waiting for a mouse event dot click. So it's waiting to be clicked. And if it's clicked, it's going to run the function play one. And then play one, um, I have it right here, function play one is an event and it's a mouse event. And what it's going to do inside of here, um, and the void is basically saying it's not returning any data. And then what we have inside of here for it to actually do is go to and stop on what was in my previous tutorial, a frame called leaves. And what we need to do is um, basically change this. You can use frame labels. I'm not using them in this tutorial. Um, if you want to create them, you can basically go to a frame and then come over in the properties and label it um, a certain word and you can put quotes around it and use that. But I'm just going to call it um, two because basically um, it's going to go to frame two, which is our first image, and then three, four, five because um, we have already have the first one, which we don't want to select because the images are starting on frame two. So we're gonna go back into that, and I'm just going to change leaves and take out the quotes, I'm just gonna put two, and then while we're at it, I'm going to change the rest of these. I'm gonna say three, four, and five. Okay, let's make sure I numbered that correctly. All right, so now that I did, um, the next thing that we need to do um, what I haven't explained yet is basically the second thing that I just changed here. Um, you can see button two is the exact same thing as button one, except it's BTN two 
and I change it to play two instead of play one and play two right here. So you're, it's basically the same thing. If you copy and paste that, just change the numbers and you're good to go. So um, that code is pretty straightforward. So up here on the stop action, I'm just gonna put a semicolon. It doesn't really matter, but I like to put that in there. All right, so the next thing that we need to do um, before I forget is to go to the timeline and we need to make sure um, that this these thumbnails are on each of the frames. So if, if for some reason your thumbnails are only on the first frame, you need to make sure that they're on all of the frames here. Um, mine seem to be, if they're not, you're wanna, gonna wanna click on your thumbnail frame, go to copy frames, and then go to last one, and go to paste frames so that all of your thumbnails are on all of your images, because you don't want them to only be on the first one. So um, that was just a little side note there. So I'm just gonna go back into the action script for the thumbnails. And what we're gonna do is basically integrate this with the automatic function right now. So the way that we're gonna do this is the first thing that we need to do is we click on a button. So we need to stop the timer from working. All right, so we don't want the timer to be going anymore. We're, we wanna take and stop it. So I'm just going to take and paste this um, right here. We're gonna to go to and stop two. And so I'm just going to say um, next image, which is what we called that timer. And we're gonna say dot stop, open close parenthesis, semicolon. And that will stop it. Actually, I think I'm gonna put that before the go to and stop, just to make sure that it stops that first. All right, so I'm just gonna take and paste that on each of these other ones, just to be sure that we have that in there, because if it doesn't stop, then what's the point of having the thumbnails, because it's just gonna blow through them. So we're gonna paste that in front of the go to and stop on each of those functions. All right, so now back up in the first function, um, I'm just gonna take and put some slash in here so that while you're watching this on YouTube, it's easy to distinguish where I'm at, and I'm only in the first button here. So I'm in between these two sets of slashes. All right, so now after the go to and stop, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an event listener, and we're going to say, if I stop having my mouse on this thumbnail, then we want to reset the timer. So we're gonna start the gallery playing forward again. So we're gonna call that uh, btn one dot add event listener, and uh, the E and the L are capitals on add event listener. Open close parenthesis, semicolon. Inside of that, we're going to, inside the parentheses, we're going to type mouse event, capital M, capital E, and then dot roll in all caps, underscore out in all caps, and then comma, and we're gonna name a function, and we're just gonna call it roll out. All right, so now we need to create this function. So I'm going to go to the end, hit enter a couple times, type function, roll out, okay? Open parenthesis, event, colon, mouse event, and again, capital M, capital E, and then close parenthesis, and then colon, void, open curly bracket, hit enter twice, close curly bracket, up arrow key. All right, so now what we're gonna do um, is take, oh, it already added a curly bracket in, so I didn't need to add a second one. So you just wanna make sure that you have two curly brackets down here at the end and no more, otherwise that'll give you an error. All right, so inside of this function, what we're going to do is, remember before, I said whenever you're restarting a timer, you don't just wanna start it, you want to reset it and then start it. So we already have it stopped, we need to reset it, and then we need to restart it. So we're gonna say next image dot reset. Okay, and then open close parentheses, semicolon, and I'm just gonna copy this, and then hit enter, paste it, and then instead of reset, we're just going to type start. If I spell that right, start. All right, so we want to have it reset, and then it's going to start up again. So every time you click a button, it's going to stop the timer. So it's not gonna be moving forward on its own anymore. And it's also going to go to and stop on that image, so it's going to stop the timer and go to that image. Then it's going to wait, and it's just gonna keep going, keep waiting, keep waiting until you take your mouse off of the thumbnail. The minute that happens, it's going to take and reset the timer and then start the timer back up, and it's just gonna keep playing through these big images again. All right, so now let me try and explain. Um, we're, so we still need to put this function on the other buttons, um, a little copy and pasting on that. Um, but real quick, I wanna explain why 
in the world we took and put this first image separately or this first frame separately than the rest of it. Now what happened um, when I was testing this out is it would get to the last frame and it'd go back to the first frame and every button except the first one would work. And I was wondering why that was and I realized that it was not working because I'd have this interval stuff right here, this interval code on the first frame, the first image of my gallery. And so every time it was going there, even though I was stopping it, it was still starting that up again with this code. So I just took and bumped it a frame sooner and it'll cause a teeny problem, which I will show you how to fix, um, but it definitely solved the much bigger problem um, in the end. So that is why I took and put that on its own layer um, rather than taking and putting it on the first layer of the gallery or the first layer, um, the first image of the gallery. So um, let's go back into our code and finish that action script out. So I'm just going to take, and we already have the functions for each of these. So basically we just need to take from this, this uh, first curly bracket here. So we're still leaving one behind. First curly bracket all the way up to the BTN1 layer. And I'm just gonna do control C. I'm gonna go down and I'm going to go right after the go to and stop of the second function. Paste that in. And remember, we had BTN1 in there. You're going to want to make sure and change that to BTN2. So we're going to go down to this third button right after the go to and stop. Hit enter. Paste the code in again. Okay. And change the button 1 to button 3 so that it corresponds with all of the play 3 and everything. And then we're going to go down and do that again on the last one. So I'm, just, I'm backspacing that. I mean, technically it doesn't matter, but I just like to have it all lined up. And then we're going to change BTN1 to BTN4. Now, if I lost you, basically we're taking what we did in the first one and making it look the exact same for the rest of the functions. So if you, want it, if you got confused, look at the first one. Make sure it looks the same for the second ones, except that the numbers are changed. So you should have twos corresponding throughout the entire thing, except for the go to and stop for that one, and then threes and fours for the next one. Um, it's just basically copying and pasting, but it can get a, a little bit confusing. So if we've done everything right, uh, I think that everything should be working. Um, so I'm just going to go to File, Save As, and then we're just going to call this um, Thumb Int, save over the file I have, yes. And we'll do Control Test Movie. And let's see if this works. Ah, it appears to be working. So if we wait, it'll move on two seconds for each image, and it should go back to the first one, and so on, and it'll go on. So now if we click on an image, click on the first one, and wait, you can see that the timer has stopped. It's no longer moving forward, and as I move off, it'll go to the next image. So I can do that for each of these. I can take and just, I want to stop on that one, and look at it. All right, I'm done looking at it. I can take my mouse off and you'll see that it'll start up with the automatic timer again. Now, what you just saw there was a little flash. If you watch, once it gets to the trees and it goes back to the columns, you'll see a white flash. See it right there? That's the problem of moving everything to the first frame in order to fix the problem I was talking about earlier. So I'm just going to close this and the way that we're gonna fix this is basically by just, um, it's playing for one frame and if you know anything about like film and animation, basically it's in 24 or 30 or even 60 frames a second. So in order to see one second of image, your eye is seeing 30 pictures. So basically one frame isn't gonna make a big deal. You're not gonna be able to tell that this one was up here for one frame longer. So what we're gonna do is basically take and copy the first image. So I'm gonna copy the frame and I'm just gonna paste it on from the big images and I'm gonna paste it on that first frame there. So you can see that now that image is no longer gonna flash because it's showing that one for an extra, I don't know, 24th of a second. So you can see right there, depending on what our frame rate is over here, yeah, 24 frames per second. So you can see that it's got an extra frame there. And if we do the same thing for our thumbnails, then we will not be able to tell a change whenever it goes from the first one, or from the last frame to the first one. So we're gonna do paste frames. And now you'll see, if we save this out, Go to Control Test Movie, and I'm just going to go to the last one so that we can see it. You can see that there's no jump in there. So if we, it'll start and it'll go back, and there's no jump at all. 
because it's showing that other image for a fraction of a second in order for us to, um, or I can't really see that it's there any longer and it works perfectly. So you can see um, that we've created a pretty nice gallery there combining the two. Uh, don't forget you can get all the code that I've been mentioning on my website. Um, and uh, I hope you guys learned something in today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.